That's this one we've been called to is uh, Wi Plan system, I believe, and the essential heating is going on when it should be hot water only. So, gonna need a multimeter on this one. So, first thing you obviously do is prove that it. Is this Martindale proving unit. As you can see, we break. Now the old house one or two of those uh, control units had to be replaced. Right guys, sorry about that, I didn't get much footage. So, <coughs> the heating would come on when it weren't supposed to, when it was hot water only. Straight away, the little pin switch black thing on the motorized valve was in M middle position so it would do both heating and hot water in said position so I turned on uh, made sure the heating was off and turned on the programmer for hot water only the little M the little black Duda. I don't know what the hell is it called anyway that thing stayed in position M it didn't move over motorize over to just W for water so I took the head off that tried turning a little spindle seized removed the circlip bit of WD-40 winding it in and out slowly with the grips you don't want to push it too far in just a little bit just keep working it more WD-40 just keep working it and working it until you can turn it with your fingers Clicked the head back on, tested it again, job done. She also said there was an issue with the programmer, that it was coming on an hour earlier than it was meant to. Needless to say, it was 12 o'clock, the programmer time was one o'clock. Thanks for watching. Right, so next one this morning, we've been called out to a leak on a Worcester. <coughs> See, they've got a big tub of catch in it. And what it is, I don't know if I've done these on YouTube before, I know the loads of people have, but it's the flow adapter on the cold feed into the boiler. This is what this green umbrella's for to protect the diverter valve underneath. So we'll get the water shut off underneath. To the boiler and open a hot tap and I'll get back right, so the cold water's off now to the boiler it's to isolate it on the valve underneath opened a hot tap should be safe for us, to, for us to work on that should be safe at least that beam right behind me it's not very safe what I'm going to do first is oh crack this nut this union off the cold feed to the boiler can you hear it sucking in now Emptying out the tap downstairs, I think exactly what we want. And I'm going to remove, remove even this clip here. Flathead screwdriver and push it up. I'm only doing it gently because I can still hear the water sucking in. Hopefully, you guys can too. Remember the way this goes in, one side has got a little kink on it. I don't know if you can see that just yet. That side's our left hand side. So I normally just place it on top the way around and got it out. Because no doubt we'll forget. Disconnect the um, flow switch now. Get our towel out and pull this forward. Towel now covering the board. Shouldn't be much here anyway. But just pull on that. The flow switch has come with this one. Stay like that, but our adapter is inside. It's a little thing you can pull on here sometimes. That'll help it out. I'm probably going to need the grips on that. No doubt it won't be in one piece. Nope, broken to pieces like cheese. Our flow restrictor has been left inside. Get rid of that out of the way. 
we need to reuse that. Sorry if my fingers are in the way on this. Yeah, two pieces, two white pieces. We're gonna be reusing because that's that's our restrictor to tell the boiler what liters per minute should be allowing through. Oh my! Pull your last piece out. Then with a rag and a torch, I'm going to be checking down there, make sure there's nothing left inside, cleaning it out. It's ready for our new one. So this is our new one. That number's completely wrong way around for you. But it's a flow turbine adapter. And sometimes the new ones, they come with the fibre washer for the 15 mil union you've just opened up, which is decent. These restrictors lock in together. And the chamfered end goes to the outside. And you get your new nut. And obviously tying it on and it should finish flush. Like so. Got your O-ring. The bigger of your two O-rings because all it's self-explanatory where that goes and then the smaller one. For your flow switch. Obviously, as usual, we need to grease all these up. Plenty of grease on to help it push back in. Probably teaching a lot of you how to suck eggs here, but it's mainly aimed at people that haven't done this before, want to get into repairs or the more beginner, novice, begin, novice engineers. Not that I'm much further on than novice. This was the old one. I mean, this is plastic. And only cold water goes through that. Explain that was there. In now. The thing, the part you pulled out, used on your pliers to pull out. Obviously keep that to the top again. Push it in and you'll hear it locating. You'll hear it, I feel. One hand in. Pretty hard work. There we go. Gotta take this flow, flow sensor now off this hope pipe. I'll just get a little flathead screwdriver and just part them, just makes it easier for putting them back together. Flow sensor back in now. Obviously I've got to grease up this o-ring, they don't come with a new one, but nine times out of 10, the old one's pretty good. Guider in position, square on. Get it square on. Push her in, and then, then you clip. This is what people struggle with. Sometimes I struggle with. But I find if you get it guided on the right hand side first. Get your long nose pliers or whatever you're going to use. Pull the left hand side down to square it back 90 degrees. need to locate it in the bottom as well. It's not quite in yet. Like so. Now, I've just got to change this old fibre washer, which I probably welded to. Normally I, yeah. Flick that off with a flathead, put a new one in, tighten it up. So before you turn water back on, dry everything off before you've been working so you can inspect afterwards. 
could just be an old damp patch from before you started. Plug your um, flow switch back in, obviously coordinating the colours of cables together. Shut your hot tap off. And we'll open up this, the cold mains to the boiler. Right, that's our water back on. Tested, make sure hot water's obviously working again and everything else is functioning back on the boiler. Check for leaks where you've disturbed. On to the next one. Hope that helps somebody.